Now, Valentine, this is her debut in MMA. How should she be thinking about maintaining her, you know, her energy throughout yeah. this? Is she going to yeah. want to come out straight and feel so she feels like ready? Or yeah, she wants to, you know, taste the game. But uh, so striking, kickboxing, especially in short periods, it's it's kind of a aerobic sport. You bounce and you flow, and anaerobic sports are really different. And wrestling can, especially for five minutes, can be more anaerobic. So it really sort of this is exactly what Salamova would have wanted to do is push her against the fence and not only see if, quote, she can wrestle, but also see if she can manage energy in this. Not mm. the same energy as bouncing and throwing jabs and kicks. So how exhausting is this when you have a fighter, same weight, just pressed up against you on the cage? It is exhausting for everybody, but it's more exhausting the less experience you have in it. And so it's a smart move for Salomova. You don't even need to take her down. You just need to make her grapple and carry you. If you can take her down, great. But if you don't, make her defend and make her wrestle and make her work and tax her energy systems in ways that her kickboxing and boxing experience has not taxed her. Robin, let me ask you a question there. Which one of them is expanding more energy in this position here, in the clinch? So, it's tough to say from looking at it, but typically the person initiating can kind of manage how much reaction they get from the other. So Salomova is doing a lot of work, but she's more familiar with it. Now she she's fighting hard to get the takedown and she gets it. And there it is, fantastic work for a bit of reward, but does Bantine have, oh no, it doesn't look like she's well, not gonna look on her head anymore, no. but she's got under dominant yeah. position and she moves to the top. So after all of that work, and Valentina mount, it's Tisha on top in a mount, yeah, and she knows how to punch. She Salomova literally just about stood up. <laughs> she just kind of like, Jiu I'm getting up now. Jiu Jitsu's not real, Robin. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> it, it can be, uh, but if, if you decide, there are certain scenarios in which you're like, just I'm gonna stand up now. Oh, oh, sneak. Oh. And beautiful one, two there by Valentine. Salamova, she's not going to want to stand her back against the cage like this for long. So, this has been, well, excellent takedown. Yep. I was, so, that control of the chin, there's no choke there. So, Balen, Balen Chen wants to release that head, you know, sooner than later. There's not much there for her. Um, whereas Salamova, she worked damn hard for half a round to get to the top. Now she's at the top. She wants to do damage. So should she look for do damage here, do you think? Or should uh, Salamova look a bit more on position and trying to move into a more dominant controlling space? So that's a really good question. You, you want to keep your position and do damage to advance your position and do damage to maintain your position and do damage. So th they both have to coexist. You don't want to lose the, your spot. So you want to keep your spot and or improve it, but still find a free limb to punch with. And it looks like Salamova's now got inside control, but Valentine is just trying to get that leg back in to move to half guard. And it looks like she's got it with a triangle there on Salamova. Salamova was trying to advance to mount. She got a little greedy. Mm. She was inside. It's great, safe. Uh, dominant, she can do damage, got a little tiny bit greedy and wanted to move to the mount when it wasn't there, but she's still got a great position. Uh, you know, if she maintains or improves this for 90 seconds do, while doing some damage, she'll win this round. And it's been a hard round, very hard round. Now the mount. There we go, so she's got just over a minute to work here. But Valentin just stands right up. Yeah, it's so old saw, Derek Lewis job. Yeah, we saw two mounts where two fighters just like, I'm not having this. And you're right, Derek Lewis is a perfect example. Derek Lewis is just like, no, I'm getting up now. And both of these two fighters has done that. Might be a body style, might be a body shape in comparison to each other. Could be, you know, um, will versus skill in both scenarios. But we're now standing, and when you saw space made, Tisha Balanchien was violent in that space. So she's gonna try to make it. There she makes it. Oh, it seems like she tagged her. Yeah. yeah. And now there is a back in. Really, this is where Valentine wants to be. Look up, yeah. Oh, Ooh, she is. that was a yeah. big knee. And she's gone into top position of side control, Valentine. But Salamova yeah. is, looks like she's reversed it. Yeah, she already has. And again, you know, like there's a hand on her chin, but it's not gonna choke her from there. 
So back so, and forth. So many people here, Robin, would think that Ballantine, you know, has the head here. She shouldn't let it go. What, what's the what's the balance of that? Yeah. So when you Ballantine on the bottom, red tape on her gloves. When she's controlling the head, uh, she's giving up her arm, but not really doing anything. So, the end of the first round. so but yeah, what I mean. An exciting first yeah. round. That's uh, and Andy. How would you score that one? Um, honestly, it's a little bit difficult to say. But for me, uh, I think Suwat just about took it. Um, we saw Tisha land the more significant strikes, I would say. But Suwat seemed to control position. She shot a few takedowns. She, you know, she got top position, top mount, side control. Um, for me, I would, I, I would think Salamova took it, but literally just yeah. by the skin of her teeth. Yeah, so so tough to say and there's they both had the mount yeah. they both <laughs> stood up from mount they both did a bit of damage look at here just saying no i'm not going to be mounted they, they, watch this just see the violence with which he expresses those punches like nice one too yeah it's smart uh of sweat to to keep her close you know if they're again it just that and there, it's like knee to the sternum if they're far away Okay, Balenciennes, you know, fully prepared for this fight, is going to be a lot to deal with. If they're real close, chest to chest, hips to hips, um, it's close. It's a much closer fight. So, uh, Suad, right there, her corner probably said that. Hey, let's let's keep her close to us. We can win this fight close. So, it, we are now into the second round of three. These rounds okay, are five round. minutes. Balentine is in the orange trunks, and Salamova is in the gray. Oh, that was brutal. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, she she attacks. But you see, and that's exactly what, Sal what uh, Swat Salamova has done, is take the gap. And when I, when I express it simply like that, it's tough when it's big space between us, and it's better when we're close. That simplicity is true. You don't have to say, you know, uh, chest to chest, grappling range. The truth is, when it's wide like this, it's dangerous for Swat. And when it's close and they're close to each other, it's less dangerous. So you keep it simple when you only had two or three days to prepare. Yeah. And she again, she shot in for the takedown. Yep. I was about to ask Robin whether Salamova is playing with fire with a back just leaning right up against the cage and Can providing be. a more stationary target. But we just saw there she shot for the yeah. takedown and made that work for her. As we're often seeing, there's good and bad in most things. You know, how you respond to the situation is good, is the key. So when you have your back to the fence, uh, the striker can come and hit you. But when a striker tries to come and hit you, it's a good time to try to take them down. So there are always, the truth of, of co combat is there are always chances. Sometimes I'll, I'll commentate with pro fighters and they'll say, I'd like to see her do X. It's like, mm. well, you could do 27 things. <laughs> uh, and there are always many options. The yeah. simple one is sometimes the right one. And that's what SWAT's doing. Keeping it simple. I want to be close to you. And again, Valentin did a very good job of standing up out of that position. And now we'll see from what we've seen so far. Salamova will try and get this leg. And I assume go for a takedown here, Robin. Yep. The takedown's great. If you can get it, you'll get it. If you can't, you want to keep her close. And, and see, on the other hand, Tisha made the gap. And as soon as the gap appears, she becomes violent. Look. <laughs> like, she is somebody put on earth to punch and kick other people. And, uh, and now, now she's got top position yeah. again. Yeah. But we're seeing this fight play out in an interesting dynamic yeah. here. It goes to the floor. One of them stands up. Salamova retreats yeah. to her back against the cage. And Valentin has about three seconds in, it in order yeah. to unleash as much damage as she can. And then Swad's right back in the place she wants. Again, if she can get a thigh, put the thighs together, get the hip, get a trip, whatever. If you can get her down, that's great. But even if you can't, this is better than gap. And then she gets she her down. Yeah, pulls the, pulls the leg back masterfully there. And now, so she's been in this position a few times, Robin. What does she need to do to keep Valentine here and start making this damage <laughs> yeah. count? Yeah, it's... Uh, at some point, she's just, <laughs> one of them has to slow it down. Like, one of them has to just settle tight, you know, make a, make a lot less back and forth, a lot less, you know, reversals and, and a lot less dynamic nature to it somebody's just got to saddle it in and no, no, nobody's done that no. so it's just going to keep going back and forth back and forth until one of them can't do it anymore and okay so we've got another stand up from Valentine here and Salamova is back where she wants to be 
double underhooks by the looks yeah. of it, and yeah. Valentin gets the cage, and she'll be going to put, a, put Valentin down for another takedown. Now she chooses to punch a few times. Watch it grab the, the ankle. Nope, it's not there. And, and Tisha is quite simply like, okay, the, I'm not thrilled here, but when I get a chance to make a gap, I will, oh, there's a trip. Beautiful, and oh. does she, can she maintain? Oh, there's a chance to get taken back here. She can get the hooks in, she's but she's into mount. Yeah. And it's in the middle of the cage, Robin. What does yes. this mean positionally for? So, so this is the one where you want to slow down now. It's been a lot of, but she's not, she's not. So don't be surprised if she gets reversed. Uh, it's part of what's making this so exciting. Uh, but look, she's pinning her now. A pin would, would be a nice accomplishment here. She doesn't but want to pin, she wants to <laughs> she's, she's looking to finish. But big elbows, big elbows. Yeah, yeah, top. Yes. Yeah, the referee is yeah. looking at this closely, yeah. but Valentina is still Doing fighting. Well. She's still moving. Tisha's still very much in this. So, so how's Tisha? What does she need to do to get out of this? Yeah, so we she's, can see her moving on yeah. her hips. So she's fatigued, right? See how high the hips are. You can push them down, or you can pop out the back. But you know, now you're seeing Swat settle down high up. Oh. The legs will get involved sometimes. You can go through the back door but with the legs, but slowly Tisha on the bottom is slowing down and fatiguing, mouth wide open. Is she looking for an armbar She here? might, yeah. With, and people would advise against it, but with 15 seconds left, a good time to go for it. And she oh, is. So now can she pick, can she uh, peel the hands away, I think? I, no, I don't, I don't think so. Oh, no, she can her hands. It's close. Oh, it's so close. Oh, oh, it was a second round. Crazy fight. Literally saved yeah. by the bell. Yeah. It's, uh, so, oh, what a round. One though. thing I mentioned earlier is how the, the recovery is different. In a three minute fight or a two minute, a three minute round or a two minute round or a five minute round, you get one minute. But the one minute is different because it's only one fifth of the exertion you've done. Yeah, 20% as opposed to 33%. Exactly. Or 50% in a two minute round, right? Yeah. So you don't recover as fully. Andy, that was nuts. Indeed. Look at <laughs> Indeed. And, and look, what we're seeing right here, right, is Tisha teeing up with the significant strikes, Sun Tzu with dominating with the clinch control and the takedown. We, it's clear to see who's the more experienced striker uh, yep. on show, and it's also clear to see who's the more experienced yep. mixed martial artist. This isn't kickboxing, you know, this is MMA. And this and was, this, this fun. fight, this fight has been pretty close. Yeah. But There's the armbar at the end. Yeah, yeah. and that, that would have sealed it, of course, if you could get her to tap, but you're not getting her to tap. No, uh, not in that situation. There's also the fatigue thing. One, Suad Salimova took this on three days notice. That will what? affect Second her on, on, energy on. systems. But Tisha's less familiar wrestling, so that will affect hers. So they're both dog tired out there, just like tired, tired, and they both look at uh, fantastic fight. And Valentin just walks right out to the middle yeah, and says, yeah, "Let's get it on." Yeah, right. no, no prize if you guess what Valentin's going to do as soon as she can. I do think that Sue has been doing all the right things in this fight. Like you mentioned, yeah. taking it on a three-day notice. Yeah, to me, yeah. It's, a, it's a perfectly executed game plan. Go in, clinch, take her down. And that is the one good thing when you say yes to a tough fighter who's a specialist. It sucks that you say yes to someone who's such a good kickboxer, but it makes the job, the assignment easier. I know what I want to do, and that is take away the space and try to force you to, to swim in water you're not used to. And, and she's done a great job of that. And it's interesting this round as well, Valentin has taken a lot longer to go and actually engage in striking here. Worried, one assumes, yep. from Salamova's wrestling. And as soon as she threw that strike, Salamova has grappled and got a yep. close up to her body again. The simplicity of the assignment, get close. And uh, it, it's a beautiful thing. Tisha's undoubtedly her corner said, slow down, you don't need to rush in, you can pick her apart from the outside. And that's what she's trying to do, but you, if you become too hesitant, you're now a minute, 10 seconds in, and you haven't damaged her yet. And again, she... Oh, nice reversal there. Yep. And so how important are underhooks in this situation? Yeah, so whoever has their arm, and you hear about that a lot in fighting, the underhook meaning my arm is underneath your armpit or tricep or near your ribcage. I'm the one with the underneath control. And underneath control here is really important, you know? 
the person underneath the other one can often destabilize the other one. Yeah, is that a, yeah I was about to ask Robin. So that's a that's a physical thing where you're able to leave their weight more effectively than they're able yep. to leave yours. Yep, you pull and, and push and control, lift. You get you get more of a response when you're underneath. But people master the overhook and, as well. So it's these w these are things we talk about a lot in television uh, and not often understood. But when, to your point, now you see that Swat's two arms are underneath Tisha's two arms. That's a really strong place to control somebody, especially when you join your hands. So Swat's two hands are now underneath the arms and joined at the back. So she's controlling them. Yeah, and again, we were speaking at the very beginning of the fight about how tiring something like this is being lent on. And this is Valentine's first MMA fight. These are probably levels of exhaustion more assume she's not really experienced before. Yeah, and now she's on top ever so briefly and doing damage, but she's going to go down if she doesn't pull her legs under her. She did. Suad's working really, really hard. So how does she move here from the single leg uh, to, to the back? There we go. Just advancing. So if you imagine you got your two arms around somebody's leg and you reach for their back or their back hip and pull them towards you. That's what she did. And look at Tisha still getting up. Just still standing up. The, the gas tanks on both these women have been extraordinary. Well, Especially, and let's not forget, as we mentioned, Salamova came in on three days' notice yeah. for this. And Valencia not used to. She's, so they're saying, don't elbow the spine. You can elbow the soft tissue to either side, but you cannot elbow the spine. She's a little, again, see how she's reaching over? It's a harder place to work from. And does Salamova need to worry here about any sort of guillotine show? Ah, oh, she's, yeah. uh, she's made the arm. She's removed Valentin's arm from around her neck there. So, I don't know, I'm not a judge, but Suad's really, uh, you know, gaining ground, and she's the one getting what she wants through a lot of this fight. But man, I'm impressed with Tisha. She's just got so much will and grit and willingness to push. Like, she's gonna do really well in mixed martial arts no matter how this unfolds in the last minute. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. You see that example right there. She ended up on top, even though she didn't have the dominant control positions. That was strictly will. I want to win, so I'm gonna throw you down and punch you in the face. But it is Suad Salimova who uh, gets the position she wants ultimately. And that was a beautiful level change. Yep, underneath. Re yeah, really, really slick. She saw what was she saw what Ballantine was going to do, which at this stage probably needs to <laughs> needs to knock her out. Yep. She an she anticipated it, took the takedown, and 30 seconds left in the fight. Even though we can't say they'll stay in this position following what we've seen so far. You know, there hasn't been a lot of staying uh, <laughs> throughout. It's been a really fun fight. I, I, no matter who wins or loses, I think they'll both go back and discuss this as a really fun fight. Being a, a ton has been demanded of both of them here as Swad tries to move to mount and do some damage to leave no doubt as you go to the scorecards that she won this fight on three days notice. Uh, been a hell of a fight for both of them. Yeah, amazing. The energy levels shown no, that you know, this was truly a mixed martial arts bout. We had yeah. everything from striking, clinch work on the fence, BJJ on the floor, defensive wrestling. Fantastic. Andy, where would you, uh, if you're in the judge's seat, where would you put this now? Oh, well, as I said already, it's a really close fight, but for me, I think Suwa takes it. I think this might be her first professional win of her career. Ooh, I mean, I. <laughs> Yeah, I was just about to say, I hope so for her, but you know, the, the tragedy in these fights is if you hope so for her, like, you know, it sucks that someone has to lose. For yeah. 15 minutes, these two athletes worked really hard and did everything that was asked of them. Um, so if you are hoping that Suad wins this on three days notice, ultimately Tisha has to lose her MMA debut when she showed so much heart. But this is the game and this is the beauty of it. Yeah, precisely. And it is a truly excellent fight. So we're going to hand over for the official announcement now to see who is victorious. When first of all, ladies and gentlemen, a big and big applause for these two fighters. Swift, Salimova and Tisha Valentin. When after three rounds of five minutes, we've counted the points and we have a winner. And the winner is a young lady in the blue corner, Sivat Salimova! There you go, just like I called it. Yep, exactly.
Uh, excellent fight. I mean, she dominated the exchanges. I think you find a lot of these fights, the winners are the people who can control where the fight takes place. And undoubtedly, Salamova forced Tisha to play her game. Yeah. Um, so I believe now we'll hand over to Robin for an interview with her now. Oh, sorry, one second. We're just making sure we've got the right microphone. And we should I am be ready. here with your winner, Suat Salamova. That is your first win in mixed martial arts against an incredibly, incredibly tough fighter. Tell me about how you feel right now. I feel great. I want to thank for my coach, Rodrik Pantenbrook. We took this fight short notice three days before, but my, my coach gives me hard work every day, twice in a day. He always was believing me. Thank you, coach. I did say this winning to you, coach. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to my family. Thank you, everyone who's watching me online. I love you guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, my family, my friends. Thank you, my team. Thank you, my coach, first of all. Thank you, my manager. Thank you, everyone. Hard work, hard work, face off. I was going to ask you another question, but instead, I just want to say congratulations. That was an incredibly, incredibly tough fight. And you're right, your coach deserves a lot of credit because you came in here with a really smart game plan. Soak it all in. This is your first win. Congratulations. Yeah, it's my first winning. How my coach says, important to believe in yourself. When you believe, nothing is impossible. Thank you very much. Thank you, my family. Enjoy this moment. Your winner tonight, Suad Salimova. Congratulations. Thank you An very absolutely much. excellent fight there.